Apartment Tank Radio on my roof again. Why did you make me do this? Today we are flashing a Ubiquiti Nano Station M2 with Arden. Play that awesome intro video. Are you suffering from worrying about when a localized disaster would take out all the cell towers? Internet outages? Or just wondering what will you do in a grid down scenarios? I give you amateur radio. Amateur radio can be used without an internet connection. And in a true grid down scenario, you can use amateur radio with a battery. Side effects include our F burns, experiencing a very expensive hobby, endless chasing down of touch lamps in the house, maxed out credit cards, may cause angry spouses, binge buying of Balfangs. Amateur radio, your answer for grid down scenarios. Today we're going to reflash this nano station. Let me go ahead and explain my setup. It's not the typical setup. We're going to start with the nano station. The nano station is power over ethernet, so it's plugged into the power over ethernet a dongle. The dongle has another port for the ethernet itself, and that's plugged in directly to my desktop. Because the surface doesn't have a direct ethernet plug, I didn't want to go out and get a USB adapter. I'm controlling my desktop via remote desktop. So I'm doing that over wireless. Let's go ahead and start by downloading the software. I'm at Arden's page already and we're going to go to software and downloads and download. And out of this list you're going to need to find your particular um, hardware set. For mine it is a Nano Station M2 XM. I don't know particularly how to tell if the device is a MX or a WX device. There's this information here which I did not find too useful, but through trial and error I figured out my device was a MX device when I was just trying to reflash the router firmware uh, with the factory image before we started this. To start out with this uh, Ubiquity nodes, you need to first download the factory software. And there we go. In order to get the device into a reset state, first we need a pointy thing. Then we're going to unplug the device or the Ethernet port. I'm going to then put it back in there a little bit. Not enough for it to have contact and then push and hold the reset button and then plug the device back in while you're still holding the reset button while it's booting we're gonna wait for a flash pattern of one and three then two and four on the lights and I'll point that out in a second once it gets there almost There we go, and ow! Pick something with less of a pointy end on your finger. We should see the delights flash between 1 and 3 and 2 and 4. And now the device is in a reset state. We are going to use a TFTP client to push the um, factory image to the device, or you know the Arden factory image to the device. Windows has this built in, but you have to enable it first. To do that, in the window search menu, search for features and turn on or off Windows features. Then in this list, if you scroll down almost all the way to the bottom, you'll see a FT or TFTP client and a Telnet client. Go ahead and enable both of those. You will probably have to restart your computer after enabling that. Next, we're going to have to give the computer a static IP address. To do this, right-click on your network icon at the bottom right corner of your screen and go to Internet Settings. In the Network Status, we are going to look for 
change adapter options here right click on your ethernet device I have two ethernet ports on mine and this particular case is two we're going to go to properties then we're going to choose IP4 and then go to properties again and we're going to change this to use the following IP address and we wanted a 192.168.1.0.0.0 and then the submask 255255255 mess that up 168 close and close and now bring up a command prompt and type in ipconfig sweet then we're going to confirm that we're able to ping this device by default I believe it starts with a 192.168.1.20 IP address when it's in a recovery mode. And there we go. So let's go ahead and change directory into our download folder and type in the tftp i for a binary file where we're going to send the file 192.168.1.20. The file itself, Arden. And enter. Once, if this command is successful, we'll see the um, light start flickering out of this pattern and it will start processing the um, binary file after it's finished dropped. You do not have to unplug the device after the upload has been completed the device will automatically reset and start to load that file. If it goes back to the same pattern of lights, it did not accept the file, check your hardware set and make sure you downloaded the right Arden binary bin file. <laughs> I did not use the command right. I forgot put. Because we're going to put that file. There we go the pattern stopped and we're pushing data on the LAN port it's done and now it's processing the file so we just got to wait for it to be done Let's go back to the network settings and we're going to change the IP address to a automatic or DHCP. When Arden is successfully flashed, it will hand out an IP address. So we're going to do IP config again. There we go. We got a local mesh node and a IP address of 1.14 with a gateway of um, 1.1. So if we go ahead and open that up into a browser. Ta-da! It is flashed. So, okay, let's go ahead and get this set up. I don't know what the default password for Arden is. I bet someone's laughing right now. Let's go ahead and just search that. See, my stuff is not rehearsed. It might be researched, but not rehearsed. root hsmm and it's customary to put your call sign at the beginning here and then I like to tag it which node it is put 
home. I believe around the R area we are using a negative 2 for the channel. I think we don't have to touch anything else. I'm going ahead and also just change the password while I'm at it. Save changes. This will probably reboot the router, so we'll go ahead and let that happen. Okay, let's go back to setup. I don't think we need to do much of anything else like this. Um, I know Arden itself, you will have to connect to a node running the same software and subchannels, so that needs to be coordinated between the, the group that of nodes that you're trying to build up the network with. Other than that, I believe the rest of the settings should be fine. So let's go ahead and give it a shot on top of my roof and see if I can connect to anyone else. Here I am back on the roof again. I got the Arden node on a monopod. I didn't feel like hauling up another tripod. Um, I got my tablet up here with another Arden node that I'm gonna to use to remote to this guy and see if I can connect to another node in the neighborhood. So let's go ahead and look on the computer here. Currently I got the node pointed in a north direction. The portable one is the micro router I'm running on. Home is the current Arden node. And right now I'm not seeing anything in that north direction. Let's go ahead and try to point it south. Get it a little higher. Let's turn on auto refresh, that might help. Now I'll go ahead and have it pointed south to see if I can pick up another node here. No. I'm not seeing any. Since this ubiquity node is a directional antenna, you're gonna to have to point it in several directions to see if you're gonna be able to connect to a different node. Now I got it pointed to the east. Wait for the page to reset. Still nothing, I just double checked the camera next where we're recording. I'm not coming back up here. And back to the north. Yeah, unfortunately, I'm not seeing any other Arden nodes in my neighborhood. Nope, just refreshed. Well, that's a bummer. I'm gonna go ahead and get everything collected. I did successfully get the nodes talking to each other, so that is working, and it was a successful flash. So uh, thank you for joining us. See you next time. These are some cookies my mom made to put in my go bag. Hey.